Well, it seems like a while since I've done one of these allotment videos and thinking about it, it's probably been about two weeks since I've been up to the plot and looking at it now, it definitely shows. Uh, the growing season for me is definitely coming to an end. I don't bother overwintering stuff. Um, I don't bother with broad beans or garlic or um, onions. I just put the plot to sleep and uh, start again in March next year. Although I might sow some elephant garlic on the shortest day of year because the theory is you sow your garlic on the shortest day and harvest it on longest day. So the shortest day for us here in the UK is December the 21st and the longest day is June the 21st. So. I might have a go at putting some garlic in this year over winter, but other than that, um, no, I'm just going to let everything do its thing, fade away. Um, I've still got a couple of things in. Um, I've got the leeks, I've got the parsnips, I've got the Brussels sprouts, so I'll have a bit to pick at in the coming seasons, but nothing much really. Anyhow, let me show you what's going on. Come on. The grass is still growing up here. I've brought the strimmer up. I'm going to get stuck in. As you can see, I also need to cut the heads off the sunflower plants. These are the French climbing beans which I've left to dry out on the canes. Looks like the wind's blown it over. So I'll do what I did last year, dry all these beans out and replant them next season. Despite me saying I don't overwinter any vegetables, I've got a few self-setters here, a few broad beans. What I might do is dig them up and then plant them in one uniform row and just give them a go, see if they, uh, if they survive the winter or not. I'm absolutely amazed at these tomatoes. They were an afterthought. I've got a couple of plants growing at home and rather than chuck them away I thought I'd bring them up here and just plant them in two rows and they've done really well. I mean they're still green but I can pick them and leave them on the windowsill to ripen. But I'm really surprised at how hardy they, they actually are. I've still got potatoes in the ground. I've got a half a row there, a full row here, and one or two plants at the end there. I'm definitely going to take certainly that half row and those two plants there. More grass that needs strimming, as you can see. Let me bring you up to the grapes. I just want to show you how they've come on. Let me find a bunch. There you go, you can see that they've started to change colour. And here's a slightly bigger bunch. The kale plants don't seem to have shifted much. They still look the same size as they did when I planted them a couple of weeks ago. I guess it might have been too late in the season uh, for these guys to do anything, but I'll leave them in. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I've still got some carrots to pick at. In that row there. And these are what I'm looking forward to. Parsnips. I can't wait to try these. It's been ages since I've been able to grow parsnips. Let me just show you the shoulders on this parsnip. There you go, that's what I'm looking forward to. Not bad. I've still got some very old and woody beetroot to dig up. There's a row there. I'll take some today and do a couple of juices with them. And finally my Brussels sprouts which have just been absolutely blitzed by 
the caterpillars as you can see. I'm hoping to get a couple of sprouts from them. As you can see, there are a couple coming on each plant, so I might get a, at least one picking from these lot, but the caterpillars and the, uh, the moths, they just seem to get in. There's the, uh, I did have some form of protection for them, but obviously it wasn't good enough because um, just before I started filming this morning, I was picking caterpillars off these plants. And as I look right here, right now, there we go, another little pest, actually on a decent sized sprout. Well, that's the state of play on the plot in early October. You can see I've dug that bed part way. Like I said, those are the potatoes. I've still got to take a row today. Started digging that end bed there. Those are where the uh, rogue um, broad beans are. French climbing beans, which I'm going to pick and dry out. Still got a couple of flowers going. And Mr. Sunflower. I have to take Take the head off you guys. Got a couple over there that I need to chop off today. Seems quite brutal. The leeks, obviously this patch needs weeding. But you can see I've dug over that section there. I've dug this section here. Uh, this is where the broccoli was, and yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, you can see all the seeds in there. There you go. Let me just pick one out. A sunflower seed for next year, maybe, or maybe I'll just leave them out for the birds to take. Out of juice. It's time to cut the sunflower heads now. I'll just let those dry naturally and then in a couple of weeks time I'll burn them. Okay apart from the leaks in the middle there this bed is pretty much empty. There is one row of beetroots that you may or may not be able to make out just running along the edge there which I'm going to dig out right now. I'll tickle this section over with the fork and then this bed is done for this year. There's a couple of decent beetroot in that pile. 
Uh, they may be a bit woody, but they'll be okay for reducer. Here are the sunflower heads. I'm not going to do anything with the seed, to be honest. I've got enough at home from last year. Um, I'm just going to let them dry out on the table, and if the birds want them, they can have them. I'll come back next week and uh, see what's left of them, and then just chuck them on the compost. Look at the size of those ones. Pretty decent spuds. Can't go wrong with Sarpo Mira. Right, that's it for this week. I've still got a bit to do on my plot. I've still got some digging to do, but I'm not gonna film that. The camera is almost out of charge. So if you join me this week, thank you very much and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.